and good morning from Unity Athens here in Athens, Georgia in Bell's Plaza Shopping Center. So good to have you with us this morning. We're about to have some music by Denise Rosier. You can find more of her music at her website, Denise Rosier, R-O-S-I-E-R dot -E com. And this is Reverend Bronte Colbert. I have B.J. Steinhouse with me this morning. We'll be doing the meditation later. And Kevin Thompson is monitoring from home. Hi, Kevin, and hi, Martha, and everyone. Let's have some music. is by Denise Rosier. We'll be delighted to have her back here, hopefully in 2021. You can go to her website at deniserosier.com. Please feel free to share this live stream. I think this is my favorite Denise Rosier song ever. It's so powerful. Feel free to sing along if you'd like.
Again, good morning and welcome to Unity Athens live stream on Facebook Live. This is Reverend Bronte Colbert welcoming you to our beautiful sanctuary on this gorgeous October morning. So delighted you're joining us. Please send up a heart or a like or a comment so we know that you're watching. Don't have to, but it's just fun to see your names pop up on the screen. Would you join me in an opening prayer this morning? Suggest getting comfortable however you see that, maybe with your feet on the floor or on the ground if you're outside, allowing that energy from Mother Earth coming up to bless you and to help you receive those healing, centering, holistic vibes we get from our beautiful planet. So we pause and we center feeling our alignment with the divine. Thank you, God, for this beautiful new day, this day of fall, of autumn, of color, of awakening, of infinite possibilities that are ours to accept, to open to, to be grateful for. We are aware of the so, so many blessings in our lives Thank you for each and every one of them, for our dear ones, our families, and our friends, for our ability to choose that which serves us and to let go of that which doesn't, for our ability to sense you, the divine, in everything, in the beautiful leaves, in the crisp air, in the smiles of people passing by, in our own smiles, and always, always, always in our consciousness. We thank you for everyone who comes here, whether it be in person, in the past, in person again in the future, and through the many ways we connect online. We are so blessed to have this technology. We are so blessed to have this consciousness to know that you are with us in this moment and every day of our lives. And we show up for that by opening our hearts and our minds and our thoughts to our even higher good, always unfolding. We allow that. We are grateful for that. We thank the universe, the energy of love for that. And so it is. Again, you are with us at Unity Athens on Facebook live stream. Now we'll have the reading of the Daily Word by Rosemary Segretti. daily word is steadfast. I am a steadfast spiritual seeker. No matter where I may be on my path, sometimes my spiritual life feels easy and sometimes feels hard. There are times I enjoy new insights, blissful clarity, and peace. Other times I may struggle feeling stuck and directionless, or even lonely on my walk with God. At times like these, I renew my commitment to my spiritual path. Although my attention may have wandered, the divine presence within has always remained steadfast, as near as my next thought. Wherever I am in space, time or consciousness, I discover the love, strength, and wisdom of God 
expressing through me. And from Psalm 139, verse 9 and 10, If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosemary. And now we will have a special Unity Nugget reading by Greg Bernard. From the book B by James Dillett Freeman. Prayer is a journey we make into ourselves, a journey we make toward God. We think of ourselves as islands, but we are truly mainlands. Beyond the cape of self lies a continent of being. It is not to our changing mortal self that we must look to understand our meaning and our destiny, but to this larger selflessness that lies beyond. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The highest prayer is not the one that asks for things, but the one that seeks a sense of God and our relation to God, a sense of our abiding in the hands of God, in the love of God. The prayer that is answered is the prayer of the whole person. What our whole being demands, this is what we always receive from life. It may or may not be what we cry out for in a moment of pain or desire. This is why prayer often works in great needs more readily than in trivial ones. A great need focuses the whole person, wets him or her, as it were, to a razor edge of faith that nothing can resist. Prayer is the marshalling of all our faculties. It is a unifying force. Sometimes we feel like splinter people, lonely and alone. We cannot read our direction right. But prayer orients us. It unifies us with ourselves and makes us whole. It unifies us with life and makes us alive. It unifies us with God. Prayer is not for the purpose of changing things, but of changing us. It is not to make the infinite conform to our will, but to help us to understand and conform to the will of the infinite. Shall I change the sea by shouting? or the wind by wailing. Yet when I was a child, I dug a hole in the sand, and even as I dug, the sea welled into the hole and filled it full. When I pray, I dig down through the sands of self so that the sea of God may fill me full. Good morning. Thank you, Greg, for that recording of the Unity Nugget. Appreciate that so much. Had a little technical difficulty on my end at the beginning. I was stepping on one of the cords to the um, sound <laughs> connection. So the only part that you missed was that it is from the book, what he read, was from the book B, B-E, by James Dillett Freeman, published by Unity Publishing in 1957. And again, good morning. It's so good to have you with us. I love seeing your faces that
pop up in your hearts and likes and letting us know who's watching. And there's always people that are watching that decide not to sign in, and that's fine too. But we love it when you share and when you send out hearts or make a little comment or a big comment. So happy you're with us this morning on this gorgeous October day. And guess what? We have some announcements. Yay! We've got an audience here today, a congregation here. You're not an audience. BJ Steinhaus is with us, so we've got real live sound effects. Oh, wow. And she will be leading us in meditation in just a little bit. So, are you missing even a little seeing each other at Unity Athens? Or if you're new, would you like to see some of the other people a little bit more in person? You can now connect today with a Zoom chat after the service that's set up by Peggy Olson. She can give you info. I see that she is with us this morning on how to connect. It's from noon to one o'clock today, and it was also just before the service. We love these chats, and we do them about once a month. T-shirts. I love my Unity t-shirt. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. These are Gildan fabric. It's fun to wear it out. They're soft. And you get to claim your good at Unity Athens. Betty Rice is still taking orders from you if you're interested in that. And those of you that have ordered already, we are expecting a new group of shirts to come in shortly. More announcements. Yay, announcements! <laughs> Tomorrow, Monday, October 19th, is yet another Blessings and Booklets here at our sanctuary in Bell's Plaza. That's 995 Hawthorne Avenue, right across from the Burger King. The time is from 4.30 to 6.30 this time. I tweaked it a little bit because I have a, an appointment to donate blood at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Speaking of donating, if you come to get a booklet and a blessing, consider bringing something to give to the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. We are again collecting food. There are people that can use food, I'll put it that way. And the Food Bank is doing a great job, but they are also requesting donations. You just bring the food here, we will box it up and get it to them, or they will come and pick it up. Non-perishable items, I would imagine they can also use um, some home things and diapers and even pet food. So consider helping with that and stopping by tomorrow. It's fun to talk and to see you all. We meet in the parking lot. You can talk car to car if you want. We can even put a few chairs outside if you want to talk to a friend. Speaking of donating again, consider donating blood through the Red Cross. They are doing a wonderful job of supplying blood across the country. I really enjoy giving there. There's a new class. Yay, a new class. A book study starts this Thursday via Zoom from 1 o'clock to 2.30. It will go through, I believe, the first Thursday in December, and it will not meet on Thanksgiving, if you're wondering about that. The book is In the Flow of Life by Eric Butterworth. It's on a donation basis. You can register by emailing unityathens at gmail.com or bronte underscore rights, W-R-I-T-E-S, at yahoo.com. And yes, we have pumpkins. There's two that are named. The one on the left's name is Orange You Happy, and the one on the right is Orange, you glad announcements are done? And I have a few jokes. Where does a pumpkin preach? From the pulp it. Who helped the mini pumpkin cross the road? The crossing gourd. And how do you mend a jack-o'-lantern? With a pumpkin patch? Yay! Announcements are done. So we're going to move into this very sacred part of our Sunday service with meditation by B.J. Steinhaus. We're so glad she's with us this morning. 
you can send up a hi or a note to her and we will look at all the messages after the service is over. Yes, we do practice safe distancing. We wear our masks unless we're, uh, unless we're up here talking and we just do elbow hugs. BJ, thank you for being here. Good morning, Unity Athens. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day. It's so good to get out of the house. You know what I mean? Oh, welcome to the meditation part. What is meditation? What is meditation? Hmm. Some people get really confused and a little anxiety about, oh my, I gotta meditate? All meditation is, is getting very quiet, stilling your mind, not stopping it, just calming it down, taking a few deep breaths in and out, and getting quiet, listening to the still small voice within you going into your heart center going into your personal self and just being quiet so take a deep breath in and blow it out and take a couple little puffs at the end to blow it all out Sometimes it's what we release that's more important than what we're taking in. But you've got to make space to put the new in. So get comfortable. Turn off your music. Turn off the surrounds. Ignore your phone. And take a deep breath in. And then blow it out. And puff. Take another deep breath in and let it out, puff. Now just take a real deep breath in calmly, quietly and just let it out softly. Continue taking some deep breaths in, but quietly, gently, and then releasing them. Close your eyes if you'd like, and go within your heart space. And just be there. Breathe in, breathe out. Don't force it. Breathe in, breathe out. Just be here in this moment, right now. Be calm. Be in your heart space. Gently. Easily. Go deeper. Go deeper into you. And just be here now.
Now gently bring yourselves back to this world. Take a deep breath in. Feel it going into your lungs and just exhale. Move your fingers, your toes, stretch a bit. Bring yourselves back to this world. But carry the peace that you have found back with you because it is yours. Take a deep breath in and out again and start to come alive. Stretch, move, move your head. And thank you so very much for joining me in this meditation. Thank you so very much for that beautiful meditation, BJ. I went so deep and it was just lovely. Appreciate it. Interesting, Be Here Now, which was mentioned in the meditation, has come up for me numerous times this week as I remember to be here now. It's part of what we will talk about this morning. Our title is Spiritual Potential, Spiritual Power. The time is now. We hear, we are taught that we are spiritual beings, but do we live that truth? How do we access it when we're feeling perhaps troubled or worried or lonely? Could it be as simple as when a child digs a hole in the sand? And of course that came from that beautiful reading that Greg Bernard did. Hey Greg in Atlanta from the book B by James Dillett Freeman about prayer. We meditate a lot in unity and new thought and we pray and we're not saying one is better than the other or we should do more of one than the other but I know myself sometimes I don't do as much praying as I do meditating. I feel that meditation is my prayer and I get in that quiet time and it's wonderful whether I'm sitting by my home altar and lighting a candle or holding a special crystal in my hand or whether it's just taking a few moments in the car before I go somewhere, always before I go somewhere and not when I'm driving, to meditate and to focus on what I want to see in the segment of my life that is coming up whether it's driving somewhere or interacting or going out in nature. But what about prayer? And what does that have to do with spiritual potential, spiritual power? The time is now. As James Dillett Freeman wrote and as Greg read, prayer is the marshalling of our faculties, the marshalling of it. It's unifying. Sometimes we feel like splinter people, lonely and alone. Have you felt like that at all lately? A little lonely, a little alone? Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I have my wonderful dog, Mr. Pancake. Many of us don't have dogs. Some folks are living completely by themselves or even if they are living with other people, it can feel lonely to not go out and see more friends or to do the social things you love doing. But what if, and I believe it's the truth, all this is leading us to a greater knowing, a greater sense of going within to create in the outer. We can look at this as a, this whole year so far of worry and concern, fear, for many of us, grief for many of us. We can look at it as a very, very difficult experience, which it certainly can be, or we can also see into it as a mystical overcoming of and an ability to change our outlook on the world 
and the world as we experience it. Part of that, again, is through prayer. Being here now, raising our consciousness. What else did James Stillett Freeman write? We cannot read our direction right. Sometimes we're feeling like that. Like, where, where is this going? How much longer is this going to go on? But prayer orients us when we don't feel the direction. It unifies us with ourselves. With ourselves. It makes us whole. It unifies us with life, with the bigger part of this experience. and makes us feel more alive. It unifies us with spirit. Now, in unity, we teach that God is everywhere present and all good. We don't need an intermediary to approach this divinity, to speak and connect, feel connected with it. We're actually always connected, and that is what we teach. But sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we don't, we don't feel like it, and sometimes we don't feel like it. Where is that connection? But it's there all the time, and prayer helps us remember that and align with it. Prayer is not for the purpose of changing things, but for changing us. And this is also a common theme through unity, that we don't pray to change something out in the world, although we can see helpers coming, blessings on medical staff, lessening of worry for people. But when we pray, we become more aware of the spirituality that exists in us and as us walking in this world. If we remember to pray. I really love the last two parts of what Greg read today. Shall I change the sea by shouting? Can we change the political environment by shouting at it? Can we change the wind by wailing? Can we change what's going on health-wise in this country and across the globe by wailing? No. Yet, when I was a child, I dug a hole in the sand. When I first heard this, when I was listening to Greg's recording, it just stopped me in my tracks. Do you remember times you were at the beach or the lake or the ocean, sitting in the sand, digging? I always had visions, did you have visions of these amazing sand castles you were going to build? My brothers would usually knock mine down, either that or theirs would be so much more complicated and wonderful than mine with turrets and drainage ditches and little characters running around in the castle where most of mine was in my imagination, not to make that any less. When I was a child, I dug a hole in the sand, and even as I dug, 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 the sea welled into the hole and filled it full. I can picture that and me in the sand and sometimes I found it kind of annoying if the water came in where I thought I was working with dry sand and it's wet and everything was fall. My turrets are falling down flat. But that's the nature of the sea. And that's what happens for the digger. And it's good. And as James Dillard Freeman finished up in this section, when I pray, when we pray, we dig down through the sands of self. Feel that. We dig down into the sands of self so that the sea of God may fill us full. Wow. Thank you again, Greg, for that recording. You are my spiritual enlightenment for this week. And it's been a week for me. 
Uh, you may have heard or seen that my dear mentor and teacher and the amazing minister that ordained me back in 2001, Bishop Dr. Barbara Lewis King, made her transition Sunday night just a week ago. I was up doing some other things for Unity World Headquarters, and all of a sudden there it was on my phone, a video from Ilana Van Zant. I say that very quickly because I don't pronounce her name quite right yet. But she was sending a video that Reverend Bishop Dr. Barbara had made her transition beautifully, peacefully. She'd made a video a couple days before and um, in the realm of pure spirit. They did a ceremony Wednesday at Hillside International Truth Center, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, three people released each a white dove into the air. There were candles lit. There was a wonderful gathering outdoors to first commemorate her life, and there'll be another service on November 7th. But that fits into this for me because in her last video, Bishop Dr. Barber was talking about be here now and truth. When I went to school in her ministerial school, we were taught truth. You speak truth, you live truth, you talk about what you want and not what you don't want. You look at the world as a mystical, beautiful place and yes, we have to walk into it in a human experience with other humans being and real life needs, but we always were told to look for the higher truth in everything, to be here now, to watch our words that we create with our thoughts and our words. So blessed to have known that fabulous, fabulous woman. And then I watched Lee Harris Energy, a video that he does on YouTube this week for his October update, and that was all about be here now. You are needed now, and now is the time, is one of his upcoming booklets or podcasts. You are needed, and now is the time. Do you feel that? <clears throat> I'm telling you, there's been days during the last few months when I felt more needy than needed. But we're needed. We are spiritual beings. You are a spiritual being and you can gift the world just by being aware of that. By your presence, by your prayers, by meditating, like that beautiful meditation with BJ, and by looking to see what can I do today to make the world even better. And it might not be going out and volunteering, but there are many things. If you're not already, consider taking time away from all news for a day, for a week, for three weeks. Might be a challenge, but even for a day. Fine to stay in touch with the world, but don't let's let's try not to let it consume us, to change our mood, to change our way of thinking about things. Turn on something else instead, or go for a walk, perhaps. Who could I call? You might want to ask yourself. What can I do to make somebody else feel better today? Might be a friend, a relative, a neighbor. Might be a chalk drawing that you put on your driveway that people can see as they go by. Or a sign, or a painted rock, Unity Athens rocks, that says you are loved. What you are is wonderful. Your life matters. Love is all. Love is love. Spend time in the quiet, in meditation, seeing light, seeing kindness, seeing love, seeing that in your mind, maybe out picturing it onto the world, 
seeing in your mind, through your wonderful power of imagination, what you would like these next weeks to be like, the next months to be like. Picture it, send it out, send it out. You might not be able to do everything with it, but you can imagine whatever is needed coming to fruition. And then, be here now. I was looking for a piece of music on my home computer, and I noticed a folder with Emmett Fox's name on it, which meant I put a number of things probably in the Emmett Fox folder. And I thought, okay, well that's great because I was just talking to the Thursday class a couple of weeks ago about his wonderful the Golden Key pamphlet where every time you think about something you don't want, you turn your attention from that and think about spirit. Think about your connection with spirit. Think about God within. Think about what God represents to you, whatever you call the divine. So I opened that folder, be here now. Didn't say it on the folder, but it sure was in there along with the time is now. And this is called Now is the Accepted Time by Emmett Fox. God's time for my demonstration is now. Capital N-O-W. The time God wants me to be healed is now. The time God wants me to be prosperous is now. The time God wants love in my life is now. The time God wants me to raise my consciousness is now. The time God wants me to be in my true place. Consciousness in the world, my true place is now. There is nothing to wait for except the change of my own consciousness. And of course, this totally fits into the daily word and into the unity nugget. And then at the bottom, there was a little bordered off box with a bit more from Emmett. And if you ever want copies of any of these things we read here, just send us an email at unityathens at gmail.com and we'll be sure to get that to you. And if a week goes by and you haven't got it, remind us again. We'll be sure to get it to you. But this is also from Emmett Fox. There is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer, no dis-ease that enough love will not heal, no door, no door that enough love will not open. Have you felt some doors closing in your life? There is no door that enough love will not open. No gulf, no gulf, that enough love will not bridge. No wall, that enough love will not throw down. No sin, he said, we call that missing the mark, that enough love will not redeem. It makes no difference how deeply seated may be the problem or the trouble, how hopeless the outlook, how muddled the tangle. How muddled the tangle. I've had some tangles that have felt muddled this year. How great the mistake. A sufficient realization of love will dissolve it all. Sufficient realization of love. Dissolving it all. If only we can love enough, we will be the happiest and most powerful beings on the earth. Wow. So let us remember, we do have the power to change our circumstances, not always in the physical, but certainly from the spiritual aspect. 
you are right where you are the best place for you to be right now you're needed you are needed and now is the time we always like to make sure on these Sunday gatherings that you feel your connection to Unity Athens and to each other. We like to hold our hand up to our screen. And if you have a touch screen, just a reminder, you can turn yourself, turn your screen off by touching it sometimes. We hold our hand up to the screen. And we exude love through that. We feel our connection. This is a safe place. It's a safe place here, and it's a welcoming place at Unity Athens, and we send that feeling of safety and love to you. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are part of a larger community here. This is a spiritual community, and by being here today and whenever you can, you remain part of that community. We believe in the power of love, in an infinite spirit, call it what you like, a divine holy all that is loving, comforting, supportive, empowering. It is whatever you need. If these times are feeling like too much, know that we are holding you up in prayer and in spirit. Know that we are one day closer right now to things being even better and better and better, one day closer. And in this day and in the days ahead, as you find the good, the better, the ways to be here now and to help others, things around you will feel brighter and brighter that's the truth. You are that. Thank you for the honor and the privilege of your time here. We can feel you here in this sanctuary and where you are physically today. Together, all of us in spirit and at Unity Athens. You are powerful. So is spirit. And you are that. Namaste. It is time for us to have our sacred exchange. Uh, a time to count our blessings. To acknowledge all the flow that comes in. And if we're able to give, because as we give, we receive. As we allow and we give out, it comes back to us multiplied abundantly. We have our basket here. These hearts. Feel free to cut some hearts out and mail it to us at P.O. Box 1662. Athens, Georgia, 30603. These hearts represent the blessings and the donations that come in during the week. And in our sacred exchange, some of us like to hold our gift or the thought of our gifts over our hearts and bless them. If you've already donated, supported Unity Athens in this week, thank you so much, especially in these times. It's so meaningful. And we appreciate your support. You can give via our website, unityathens.com, at the donate page, through easytithe.com. And at that web page, there's all the different ways listed and the links to make an offering, a sacred exchange, a donation. You can also mail a donation to a P.O. Box, Unity Athens. P.O. Box 1662, Athens, Georgia, 30603. But you can also bless us. Hold us in thoughts of prosperity. 
as we continue to do these live streams, as we continue to move through this very interesting time, kind of centering and being here now in place, blessing our world. Join me, if you will, in holding <clears throat> your gift, the thought of your gift, the thought of your ability to give, your prosperity, over your heart. As we say, our divine sacred exchange blessing. I'll say it slowly if you'd like to repeat after me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so grateful. We are. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you for the abundance in our lives. Thank you. We're going to close today by saying our prayer for prayer of protection. <clears throat> Excuse me, which was also written by James Dillett Freeman. And yes, it's on the moon. Yes, it is on the moon. One of the, I should know which astronaut. One of the astronauts took it up to the moon and it's on the moon, along with James Dillard, James Dillard Freeman's masterful poem, I Am There. Perhaps we'll read that next Sunday. The light of God surrounds us. Think on that. And then say, I am the light of God. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. You want to say that again, all is well? All is well. Again, that's projecting. Because even if you're not feeling that 100%, by saying it, it brings more of all is well to us. And all is indeed well. We're going to close out with a song we don't usually use for closing, Spirits in This Place by Denise Rosier. We usually use that for opening. As we play it, and you might want to sing along, send blessings out to our world, to the children of the world, to our beautiful Mother Earth, to all areas where we don't want to go back to the news, but anywhere where you can feel your blessing will bless, your blessing will bless, indeed. We can sing that out and we can hold that in consciousness. Thank you for Kevin Thompson being our monitor today from home. Thank you so much for the reading of the Daily Word by Rosemary Segretti, the Nugget by Greg Bernard, and for B.J. Steinhaus being here in person to lead us in meditation. So now we will close with just a short prayer. Thank you, God, for this day, a day of infinite possibilities, a day where I see love in new and even more beautiful ways. A day where I experience divine health and abundance and harmony and blessings and peace and above all and through all and in all love. Thank you, infinite being, all that is, all that will be. Listen to the music by Denise Rosier, if you will. Send up a heart or a hello to someone or a blessing for all. Just a moment, the music will start. Namaste. Peace. BJ, I think we could clap while we're waiting for the music.
Just remember, Peggy Olson's Zoom group starts now. Peggy can let you know how to get into the Zoom group. So good to see you, Maureen, Terry, Bibi, Martha, Laura, Frank and Mary. Namaste, Maria, Mary. Sing along. Thank you, Nicole. Spirit is in you. Feel it. Spirit is in this place. Hop over to Peggy's Zoom chat group. It's such fun to see each other. I may see you there in just a little bit. Love to see you next Sunday. Let us know if you'd like to be part of the Thursday class. And goodness, you are beautiful today. God bless. Namaste. Thank you, Kevin.